Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, January 28th, 2024. I'm Larry Rhodes, or DJ Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Two arms, two eyes, but one heart. Excellent. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religions, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in your town, well, I'd bet you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over 1,100 of us. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. We'll tell you more about us after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? The moral of the story. And I think it'd be a good thing to jump into, particularly starting at out the new year, trying to figure out, you know, have when can we break our New Year's resolutions, et cetera. Like, let's think uh-huh. about what we can think about uh, with regard to stories and get their learning lessons. And what better story than the book of the Bible? We'll go through the whole Bible and the Old Testament, New Testaments, and think about the morals of the stories not just from a religious point of view, but also from an atheist or secular point of view as well. But before we get into that, love to tap, uh, catch up with you. Larry, how you been? I'm doing fine, except for my knee. <laughs> I the finally got over, yeah, I got over my uh, re- knee replacement on my right knee, and now my left knee is giving me all kinds of trouble. Well, how's I your right knee because... feel right now? Is it like oh, it's, it's my strong knee. It's good knee. Wow. But my, you know, I'm okay. 74, and my left, left knee, I think, didn't handle the extra stress, you know, Mm. during recovery very well. And now it's, it's, I'm having to walk around with crutches on it. It's that bad. Are you sure it's not the fact that your other, your left knee feels a little jealous knee? (laughs) Give me attention. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I believe it. It's it's like, oh, I see how I get stuff now. I just start Mm -hmm. complaining. Okay. 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 And then certainly doing it. Okay, nice. Uh, I mean, the recovery went well, right? And, yeah, and you moved yeah. about? Yeah, two months and I'm pretty much over it. I'm okay, over. fantastic. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I look forward to your next cybernetic thing because then your elbows are going to be like, hey, look at the <laughs> legs got. Probably, probably my shoulders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, shoulders are really, really complicated. Um, I can tell you this. We've had some really terrible weather over the last, I don't know, ever since the beginning of this month. December was really great. I think Christmas was more or less like 72 degrees out, beautiful sunny skies. But ever since then, it's been either snowy, rainy, drizzling cold, or just Uh what we would call muggy weather, or just straight up a blizzard, like rolling through town. And right now, it's still on the muggy side, but I'm looking forward to being able to go outside and, and hang out with friends again. You know, like it's now fun when it's like, especially sunlight during the week day when you're working and then the weekend shows up and the clouds come in and you're like man right. what a drag what a drag yeah, yesterday was miserable rain yeah. and cold you know low low clouds i mean you could the hills around you are in the clouds you know it's right amazing. right absolutely Foggy. true. i have friends but, who went out and played disc golf anyway and i told them like how'd it go and they're like well the first half the first ra- her first nine holes were completely raining and then the back end, it was only drizzling. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I know they sound excited, <laughs> but I don't want to be out there. But I just want to still be out with people again. Um, sure. I've realized how much I, that that social impact gets to me. Also, largely because when it was snowing, when we had that big snowstorm, mm-hmm. I was more or less trapped inside the entire week. Right. Like, me too. Yeah. And man, that just with yourself and a cat. And Zoom calls to remind me of COVID spring again. fever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Got to get out. Got to get out. So we got to get some good stuff to get out. My moral of the story for for this bad weather that we're getting is when we get back to good weather again, I'm going to get out and enjoy myself and remember that um, mm-hmm. and make good memories and experiences to last me through the next cold spell. Right. Speaking of moral of the stories, Larry, I was working out uh, with some friends over the week. And we had a conversation that naturally got into concepts of the Bible. They know I'm an atheist, so they bring it up. And before when I told them I was not religious, they it was like a a a thing that they're freaking out about. But now, like when someone brings up a religious topic, my religious friends will be like, ah, let me explain to Ty what 
they mean when they say this. And it's more of, it's not like an insulting way. It's more of just like, he must not know what we're talking about. Right. So let me explain. They don't realize that, that most atheists are post-religious. That's true. But listen, in this circumstance, it was a weird thing because I had no idea what the lady was talking about. So she, so there was a lady who was talking about, hey, when I was in school, we had to pour it up, we had to, um, when we did bad things, we have to take out the sword of justice and truth and write down phrases over and over and over again. And I'm like, what is that? It's like, you know, it's from the Bible. It's like, is that a bookmark? Like, is that a notebook? Like, are you talking about like a chalkboard? What's the sword? What of is the sword of truth? Right. Yeah. 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 And then my friend who's a Christian who knows I'm an atheist is like, oh, that's just another uh, name for the word of God. And I was like, oh, so it's mm. just the Bible. You just put right Bible verses down. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bible verses. And the conversation continued from there. But I was thinking about the idea of the sort of truth and justice, right? Like, and how people come up with grandiose names for what their what their holy books are called. Because even Jehovah Witnesses have a, a very specific term for for their holy book. Mm -hmm. uh, I my my thing was, why are we so still obsessed with swords? Where if you read the Bible, you'll know swords are terrible and slingshots are way better. Because mm -hmm. the moral of the story from the book of, or I'm sorry, from the story of David and Goliath. Is that slingshots are way better than swords? Yet you never Projectile hear Christians talk weapons. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> if you show up to a knife fight with a gun, you're gonna win the gun. You're gonna win the fight. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ten thousand percent. Even the, the even the smallest of them can beat the biggest of them. You know, with, <laughs> if they with have the a sling. slingshot, if yep. they have a slingshot, like that's the asterisk. It's like, yeah, little guys can beat the big guys. So long as they have the 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 right projectile weapon, if the other guy has melee weapons, like I think anybody can like read that. So the the moral of the story from a Christian point of view is like weak people can overcome big challenges or something like that. As long as they have like God on their side, maybe some right. other, other stipulations mm -hmm. in there as yeah, well. God aimed the stone for him and all that. Right, 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 right. It's another so, ta taking, taking away the credit from the, from the artist, from the person who's actually doing it and giving it mm -hmm. to God rather than uh, uh, giving it to the person who actually put the stone. Right, uh, right, head. right. Cause it's God's will, right? It's uh -huh. God's will. God's will. But the other thing is, when you look at a disparity of potential power, when you have someone who is big physically, but you have a person who's against them, who has literally the all powerful supernatural being that created the entire universe on his side, it's sort of like a tag team match versus two people, one of them being an ultra powerful God, the other guy just being a dude who can do bicep curls, like probably longer than most average people, right? Or like has a height disparity of a little bit lighter. Sure. It's not a real fair fight to begin with. But to, if you were to take that element out, the supernatural aspect, you still have a guy with a sharp stick versus a guy who can throw rocks at uh, very high velocities at people from a very large distance. And they fight very, very far away from each other. Like the obvious advantage is the person with the projectile weaponry. Slingshots are better than swords. That would be my main moral of the story. So yeah. they get the wrong moral, basically. Well, I, yeah, I feel like uh, no, it's not so much the wrong moral. It's more of like the most obvious one that most people are missing the point of. Why aren't we seeing the slingshot of sword and truth be called the the, <laughs> the Bible of God? Because if someone says, "Hey, my Bible's or my holy book's called the Sword of Peace and Understanding," it's like our Bible's called the slingshot. It's like, oh yeah, well yeah. that makes sense because slingshots are better than swords. Well, You're obviously because the, the future of weapons took off after the slingshot not the sword we didn't make bigger and better and long, longer range swords we made bigger and better and longer range guns which took yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the slingshot the projectile yeah, weapon yeah gunpowder and then everything after that just got even more crazy you don't they'll mm -hmm. put they have missiles now that have like ai computers in them that cost more money to make than the things they blow up thank you u.s government but like <laughs> It's like take this three hundred thousand dollar missile and blow up that twenty thousand dollar shack in the middle. Uh -huh. like, he's like, uh, all right, fine, taxpayers. I'm sorry, <laughs> but anyway, they they can guide themselves. They can fly around, but you'll never have a sword that has like an AI robot in it being like, okay, good. Now swing harder. Yeah, now we're really <laughs> cutting them. Be sharper. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 it has like a little speaker. It does like the whole you know. It can it can make metal yeah. noises. It can make lightsaber noises. Yeah. So your point is, people are taking the wrong moral away from these stories. Yeah, I feel like people are overlooking the more obvious part of the story, which is slingshots are better. And here's the reason why I think things could be better if they did look at it, because they could appreciate engineering a little bit more. They could appreciate that technology advances, right? 
they might be able to set themselves up with better preparation because David goes through a whole training montage. He's like, I'm going to find some sticks. I'm going to find some uh, uh, rocks, make sure they're the right kind of rocks, do some aiming practice. Like he's preparing ahead of time. Like it wasn't just pray and then go into the fight and expect God to take care of everything for you, even though that is kind of how it's framed in the Bible. There was some work that went into it with regard to what are my limitations? Am I going to show up to a sword fight with a guy who's better at swords or can I be a bit more clever with how I preach, approach a problem and and use that cleverness to engineer a better solution for myself as just part of my own human ingenuity? Like there's a lot of good hallmarks that could have been pulled from that story. And you know how we always say work smarter, not harder, yeah. right? We say that as humanists, you could have had that be extracted from the Bible as like the moral to take away from. And I feel like that would have better implications for like how would it treat people and how to tackle problems rather than just sitting and praying and hoping God takes care of it for you. You could say, hey, I have a solution that I can't solve straightforward. Let me find a better way to resolve this issue. Let me get a slingshot. Yeah. If uh, if prior, prior work, then all, all football games would end up being a tie. Is both teams pray before before they go to to the arena, right? How yeah. about that? Let's just have that be the proof that God exists. It's like, well, yeah. there's another football tie. Well, did both teams pray to win? Yes. Well, unfortunately, guys, it's a tie, and they both they yeah. both prayed to God. It is what neither it is. one scored at all. <laughs> <laughs> neither one. It was it all nullified because yeah. no one trained. They only prayed. Instead of training centers, you just have praying centers. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. That's enough. Cheeky you wouldn't time. have hospitals either. Yeah, though I would love to see the slingshot tattoo on people, right? Because everyone's got big swords on their arms and their chests as a tattoo, but no one has like a cool little slingshot. Even like those big Y ones that look like Dennis the Menace was pulling yeah, them back. Yeah. You know, like, why isn't that way more intimidating than the guy who has a sword on his back? We already know slingshots are better. Like the guy with the slingshot tattoo is way cooler, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not the world we live in. But right. that's the, that is the moral of the story that we should be taking away. All right. I got another random moral of the story that I'd like to pull up. This one is a is a minefield between Larry and I, because we tend to, when we talk about this, we we go off on a lot of different tangents, but it is the book of e uh the 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 Garden of Eden. And my well, I think we have a lot of agreement there. there oh, too, really? Though. Really, yeah. really, sure. really, really. Okay. I'm sure we agree. I'm sure we agree ultimately, right? But mm -hmm. it's always it's always weird when you talk about the story because it's just you have to like it's like you're in the middle of Walmart and you have to like cut through the kids. Oh, there's so many layers have, to there's it. There's so yeah. many problems with this. But the main problem is you have a talking snake, right? That Eve believed and led her to eating the forbidden fruit. And it's so easy to blame Eve and maybe even uh, Adam for what their actions were. Even though we know they didn't have any capability of understanding what was right or wrong before they ate, until they ate the fruit. Right. Even though we knew that God set that up to happen, that God could have made a tree that was 10 feet. He made a trap. Longer. He yeah. made a trap. He even gave the trap instructions of like, hey, find this person and tell them to eat this thing. But if you were to take that aside to a point, if you were to take that to a side, what you have basically is a talking animal. And now my thing is, is, okay, so there's a talking animal, a talking snake that's telling Eve what to eat. And why did she believe the snake? In my mind, and where was God? Where was God at this time? Where's Isn't Scott? he omnipresent? Scott? No, God. Where's God? Oh, God. God, God. Okay, okay. I thought you said Scott. All right. Mm. But my main thing is God has, in the Bible, demonstrated that he has the capability to shape shift. He's been a talking bush. He's been a talking dove. The guy can turn into animals and talk to people and give them instructions to do certain things. In fact, that's sort of his method of operant. <laughs> that's his demo <laughs> from beginning to end. So, yeah. like, how was... Eve supposed to know without eating the uh, the forbidden fruit that gave her you know the knowledge to begin with of right and wrong, that the animal that approached her that was speaking the same language that she could speak, was not God already, and you're and it was her impression to be like oh there are just a lot of different kind of animals here that can speak it's like no there's there's God, all these animals and then if someone gives me instructions and they're in a fursuit, I'm gonna assume. Oh, that's just God, and God loves me, and he wants the best for me, and I'm just going to do whatever that being says. In my mind, it didn't even have to be uh, the adversary who was giving Eve instructions. It could have literally just been God and snake form tricking Eve so he can hurry up with his master plan of basically right. 
offering for a synth to everybody. That's a conspiracy. And, and why wasn't she suspicious? I mean, did all the animals talk? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, here yeah, comes yeah. a snake and he's talking to her. Why wasn't she suspicious about that? Oh, wow. Larry. Yeah. 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 Let's go back to this crime scene. That's a problem. Like you, mm. you, you clearly are capable. Of, so like the, the trigger didn't hit until I was literally like driving home one day, like Wednesday. And I'm thinking God did turn into a dove when John the Baptist was um, uh, giving aid to Jesus. And God literally landed on, on John the Baptist's shoulder. And he's like, I'm God. And this is my son. And I'm like, wait a second. That's a talking animal. I thought we stopped doing talking animals from the Garden of Eden. I thought you learned your lesson. It's like, no, no, I have, I'm always capable of doing mm -hmm. this. I'm like, if you could do that, then let's let's turn the chapters back a little bit, shall we? Because now you have a talking snake being like, I could, I know everything about the Garden of Eden and only good things are here and you should eat this thing. I'm like, wait a second, maybe a snake didn't get into the Garden of Eden. Maybe that was just God being like, man, these naked people are- Yeah, you never really see them together. Time. You know, like, <laughs> like Batman and Wayne, you don't know, see them together. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, um, yeah, exactly. The snake doesn't hang around when, mm -hmm. like, Eve eats the apple and she's like, oh my gosh, I know so much stuff. And then she goes to Eve. The snake's like, I'm just going to disappear. Da, 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 <laughs> gone. And he hides behind a tree. And next thing you know, God comes out from the same place and he's like, how dare you eat those apples? Well, but first he had to look for them. He pretended he didn't know where they were when they yeah. were hiding in the bushes. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he was like, oh, well, a snake they? told me to eat. He's like, and God's like, what snake? I don't see a snake. Is there a snake around here? I don't see a snake at all. And he's just like cleverly tucking his snake tail underneath his robes at the same time, too. It's a messed up story. So, yeah, murder mysteries need to be written better. The moral of the story for me, though, is, man, now that we just went through, I told you we would go on a tangent, Larry. I yeah, the moral of the story was like God can take different shapes. So why didn't she think it was God? I, I don't know. Don't get, yeah, well, I mean, there's there's a whole bucket of problems here, but I feel like, I feel like the most, it's a terrible mystery. It's a murder mystery that no one's ever like resolved yet. Like mm -hmm. Columbo's done this better. Columbo, if you've seen, I think the moral of the, mo the story would be like Detective Columbo would have some questions if he saw, if he heard that story. And it was like, he would read the Bible and be like, just one more thing. And he'd be like, <laughs> so you yeah. saw a, a, a talking animal, right? And it's like, God, didn't you like to turn into talking animals? Like, what are you implying? I'm not implying anything. I'm not implying anything. I'm just wondering, <laughs> like, where's the talking snake now? It's like, oh, he's gone. He's gone. Okay, so you can see everything, know everything. Just tell me where he went. Uh, I'm, I have a really bad memory, and God can't account for him. It's like, isn't that interesting? <laughs> <laughs> I think God is the snake. <laughs> That's my moral of the story, I think. I think that's a, if you've ever played a game of Clue, if you've ever seen like a good mo uh, murder whodunit, I think it's mm -hmm. pretty clear that God was a snake to begin with, especially yeah. when he later on claims to be everything, know everything, know everything. And sure. Right. Omnipresent. And be everywhere at the same yeah. time. It's like, I'm curious. The snake. Yeah. I'm curious though. What, I mean, I thought we were pretty much on the same page in this uh, garden. Even you, you seem to think we have differing opinions on certain things. Uh, like what? Okay. Uh, so there it's it's more of like we have a list of problems right mm -hmm. yeah well, my there's list, a lot of problems with it right and my list of problems in terms of priority are going to be a mm -hmm. lot different than your list of problems okay so we just prioritize them differently absolutely but i okay. think we have the same shopping list i just mm -hmm. think if you let us both in the grocery store we're not going to be right behind each other we're going to like <laughs> split to completely different directions but we'll check yeah. out at the same time yeah we wouldn't get in each other's way <laughs> <laughs> we'll have the same shopping carts. We'll be like, oh, you got all the yeah. same things I got. It's like, yeah, yeah. But I had to get the meats first mm -hmm. because no souls are important to me. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I always, my, my one of my main problems with the book of Eden is sort of like, um, so like one of my top three problems is there's uh, a job that God gave Adam, which was to name the animals. And I thought. And pick out a help meat. A What? Oh yeah, you don't know about that. No, talk to me about yeah, that. Yeah, he he told he told them to name all the animals, but he also said to search through the animals for help meat, which M E E T, help M E A T A T no, right M E E T. Okay, help well meat. I don't understand that. Explain well, this. that's basically a mate. Look for a mate among the animals. Look for and a mate among yes. the animals. Yes. And then uh, when he didn't really find any, that's when God decided to create him one. Create a woman for him. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. 
man so okay okay why would god not know that you can't mate humans with animals and and then immediately ban bestiality after the fact. Yeah. It's like, ah, yeah. dang it. That's some leftover parts of my code. Sorry yeah. about that. Uh, that's funny. That's really yeah. funny. Um, yeah, just do a search on uh, Adam and help me. So again, that Go takes ahead. me a little off track of where I was going, but that is, that's that's pretty prominent. Uh, my, my thing was, it's important for me to feel like I'm feeling fulfilled as a human being. I feel like we're people there's certain components of your life that you need to have in order to feel actualized. And if my job was to sit down next to an anthill and just watch the ants come down the hill and be like, Trevor, Brandon, Jackson, Stephanie, Melissa, like, what are you doing, Ty? Oh, I'm naming the animals. <laughs> I'm starting with this anthill. And I, I, I got like 30,000 more to go before I get up and move to the next anthill. And I, and people were like, even the names that, even if he was naming them based on text, uh, uh, the status of what kind of animal they were, we're not using those names anymore. It's, it's, we're not calling whatever he called birds, birds. And if he's sitting there naming every single different kind of bird or even every individual bird, a personal name, we're not using any of those names. It's a completely useless job. And if I didn't have an awareness, if I was lobotomized to the point where I couldn't know right from wrong anymore, right? Like if I just had that kind of- like them. Uh -huh. Maybe that's good busy work for a person like me, but as a human being, particularly with the faculties that I have now, if I was given that sort of role, I'd feel nothing but a lack of purpose in my life. And I feel like for God to give a being that as a role is such a low standard of life to give a being that has that capability of thought, you know, or, or, yeah. or trouble solving. And, yeah, and that help that help mate passage was Genesis two eighteen. And it was, it was, it says, um, uh, it's not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper who is just right for him. That was new living. Uh, the, the King James version says, I will make him a help meet for him. Help meet. Yeah. It's not good for man should be alone. I will make a help meet for him. Wow. Yeah. So next time you see a lady that you love or want to, uh, want to talk to just be, like, Hey, help meet. How you doing? <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah, she's gonna interpret it in me AT, which won't be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, oh, this guy, this guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. All right. Uh Book of Eden, a lot of problems. What are you telling me about your is that your top problem with the Bible or Book of Eden? For me, it's just actualization. Like a God would make a human yeah. being be like, uh, well, Hey, just stack pennies for the rest of your existence. You're in paradise. Well, no, my, my biggest problem, I guess there's a couple of them. Well, one is the fact that he created them without a right uh, a sense of right and wrong. And then he expected them to know that disobedience was wrong yeah, before yeah, yeah. they ate the apple. Yeah, and, exactly. And two, uh, he created a trap. He's supposed to know everything, future, past, everything, be everywhere at once, uh, all knowing, all seeing. But yet he wasn't there when when the serpent came to talk to uh, um, Eve. Or Not only he? that, but he didn't have to put the tree of knowledge where they could get to it. He could have right. put it on the moon. On mm. the other side of the world, anything, but he put it right there and told them not to, knowing that they didn't know the difference between right and wrong. Now, so there's two huge here's, things. Here's my here's my counter argument to step three. Okay, sometimes huh? I go to Burger King, right, yeah. and I have a cat, right, and I've told my cat many times, "Don't eat my burgers." That's right. <laughs> and I'll look at him and he'll be like, "I'm not eating it." When I turn around, he's like he's trying to sniff the bag. I'm like, "Get away from that, man!" No. And he'll yeah. get down off the table, and I'll be well, like, okay, he I, knows I submit, the rules now. Huh? I submit that that cat has more of a, uh, a sense of right and wrong than th they did, because <laughs> they've never been punished for for disobedience. Okay, you know, okay, until okay. that point, they didn't sure, know. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. You well, know? you see where I'm going with this, right? Like, if I left yeah. my bag on the table, and I oh, I agree. So I but, talk to my cat. He yeah. understands the rules. He understands. And now I'm, and yeah, now I'm gonna walk wrong. out the door. <laughs> but he's a sneaky little guy. <laughs> I walk out the door and they come back and my burgers are gone and there's just a mess on the floor and I have a cat that's in his litter box with gas just like making these really <laughs> terrible flashes. I'm like, that's what you get because you ate my thing. I'm upset. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the book of Eden in the, in the short says. It's just how old God. is your cat now? Uh, uh, how old is my cat? Yeah. He's seven Couple years, years. old. Now. Seven years seven? old. Now. Yeah, wow. he's seven years old. Yeah, he should have a pretty well-developed sense of of disobedience then oh yeah what you, what you expect of him what you don't expect of him. oh yeah absolutely i can i could just i can literally for my cat 
I know this was pretty e e early on too. I could just have a tone of how I say his name and he's gone. He's underneath the bed because he knows, he knows, he knows. Like I'll bring groceries home and I'll leave the bag down and he'll be like, I think I smell something I'm like Vin. And he gets, turns around, just walks out the room. So I know for a fact that mm -hmm. he he's aware of it. Doesn't take much, but also why create a being that doesn't know right and wrong? Like that seems like something that you could have easily instilled into people from the very beginning of just yeah. like, hey, right and wrong. Here you go. You're a new person. You're in paradise. Here's a job that's useful and worth and worthwhile with your time. Is everybody happy? Cool. I'm going to take this tree that has forbidden fruit on it and I'm going to turn them into rocks and I'm going to make that rock like 14,000 miles underneath the crust of the earth. Right. OK. Is everybody happy? Good. Talking snake, you're happy? I'm happy, God. Oh, you don't need arms. I'm just going to take that thumb away from you. Okay, I think everything's <laughs> good here. All right, see you later. Yeah. Like, why can't I make a better version of that story immediately in just a couple steps? By the way, no slavery. <laughs> 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 Do what you Absolutely. want. No slaves. Yeah. All right, have fun, guys. That, I mean, you could have set up paradise on Earth as simple as that. Why is it, as me, as a lowly human being, I can do that so much more simply yeah. than yeah. anybody else? And why did he make animals so they had to kill and eat each other, mm. you know, for sustenance, just for survival? Right, right. You know, right. There's so many things. Uh, of course, if you if you believe in evolution, of course, and understand how it works, you see why we have predators and carnivores and plant eaters and, and parasites and everything else. It's yep. all perfectly understandable. Mm. But why would an omniscient God who's designed all good, you know, design it that way? With pain, too. Right. Mm -hmm. Like of all things, like when you see a gazelle get attacked by lions in like National Geographic videos or yeah. documentaries, like that's an animal that can feel pain. Right. And it's screaming as it's being eaten from the hind legs up to the fore legs. You know, it's crazy mm -hmm. that we have an, a universe right. like that. Right. If it was not designed and it was just the Wild West of nature, it makes sense. But if someone yeah. actually crafted that, it's like I'm going to make a creature that eats things from the butt. Up to the oh, mouth. No, <laughs> I'm like, what is your problem? Yeah. He's like, oh, I want this is my design. I like it. It's like you're you're a terrible mm. designer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> either that or um, uh, this crazy person. Uh, what's the yeah. word? Uh, I'm going to turn into a snake after this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> a psychotic. Just some nudists. Yeah. Like you're kind of crazy, and then yeah. I'm going to sacrifice my son on a stick. It's like, oh, good. Yeah. This guy's. Yeah, crazy. we need to take a break real quick. Go on ahead, Larry. I see yeah, you. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. And I'm ready to come back, I guess, if you are. Hey. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter 5, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 22nd year now. Nice. We have over 1,100 members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. You can find us online on Facebook or meetup.com. Or you can just Google Knoxville Atheists. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Start one. Start one. That's right. Wombat, where do you want to pick up? Hey, I think we're touching on something pretty interesting and something that I might touch on before we finish this topic. But the moral of the story could just be that God's crazy. And if that's the case, a lot of these things track a lot of the things with like eight uh yeah. are, 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 are sadistic. sadistic that would work a sadistic crazy individual yeah. psychopath uh just mm -hmm. a complete inept well there's there are, there's a lot of other kind of gods i mean there's the deistic god who just set everything in motion and just sat back and see how it would work out who didn't know the future and was just watching it to see how it how it worked sure. it could be uh you know um multiple gods he could be like the uh, roman pantheon or greek pantheon of different gods uh, who okay. work against each other and work with certain humans to get things going none of them are omniscient or omnipotent um, that's it mm. or omnipresent uh there's so many different types of gods that we know of and how many that we don't know of right i mean right, it could right, be right. could be a god from the third galaxy over we don't know 
but we do have uh, uh, an explicit holy text that describes the nature of the God. And if we were to go use that as book or face value and say, okay, if this yeah, is Yeah, but we God, have 30,000 different ones, or oh, at least 10,000. No, no doubt. But here's the thing. If, if we had to figure out a cohesive narrative that makes all these 30,000 different books make sense, at least within the realm of Christianity even, like the variations of the Bible isn't just one. There's a many different versions of the Bible, right? But if we have to take like... What's the overarching narrative that we can place on this if this God character is, in fact, uh, the consistent or the the same name character through all this? It's what if this God is just crazy and and just potentially evil, not in our best interest and a terrible person to worship? Now, well, if you tracks, go by the evidence, you know, that's yeah. what you come up with. Now it completely starts tracking. He likes doing parties. He, he he kills people. He doesn't fulfill people. He sets up traps for people in paradise. Uh, uh sacrifices human beings left and right like this is a terrible person like oh if it's a terrible person that can lie to us and constantly does so then all of this and even reality sort of kind of makes a little bit more clarity right. it's a lot more extra steps and a lot of assumptions right. in fact it's a lot easier without those extra steps and assumptions just to say like hey we live in a world where we can take better care of each other rather than following a, a, a narrative from a you know a bronze age uh book you know, mm -hmm. like, or, right. or even well, even in the first book of, Bi of the Bible, God lied to e Adam and Eve, telling them that if they ate the fruit, they would die. And mm, they yeah, ate yeah, the yeah. And so, they didn't die. Yeah, God can lie to people. Even Jesus yeah. did. So it's like, hey, I'm going to yeah. come back before you guys. <laughs> even that's always like, yeah, we're still waiting for you, God. <laughs> yeah, been, been a few generations since then. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that that prophecy didn't work out so well. No, but no. uh, I have this other thing that I'd like to bring up. Um, this is the idea that uh god loves theatrics loves theatrics loves parties and what i mean by parties and theatrics is uh parties we'll do that one easy so jesus walks into a room he's like man this place can use some spicing up let me touch some of these water bottles and turn them into wine meanwhile just want to throw some heads up water in the desert is much more <laughs> useful <laughs> If you're like a guy who's like, hey, I got water to sell, like this, this took heart, this took effort to get to bring over here, compared to like wine, right? And it was like, nah, we're just going to take this water to wine. We're going to have a great party, everybody. And they had a good time. So you can touch things, turn water to wine. Here's the other thing. God, and here's what if I made theatrics in here, I'm going to This is the moral of the story? Oh, this is almost <laughs> it. This is getting close to it. But uh, the, the the moral of the story is theatrics and partying. But like that's the the party with Jesus to water into wine is the the party. Here's the theatrics: flooding the earth. Yet the, he tick, he says, "I don't like other people except for this one group of people and these select pairs of animals." I'm going to put them all. And everybody, on boat. man, woman, child, and baby is evil. And babies, children, all that stuff. Yeah. Even fish that somehow will have to be drowned. I don't know. I don't. Mm -hmm. We'll figure it out. I want to drown literally everything. Uh, I'm going to cover this entire earth in water, uh, flood everything, and then somehow take all the water off because I, I uh, it'll make sense. It'll make sense. Trust me, guys. So I'm going to put make a bunch more water, and then I'm going to take the water all the way uh, away from the earth. And it will flood everything, and I'll be with that for 40 days. And then immediately afterwards, in the same part or the same half of the book and i say half is like the new testament in the same testament i'm going to find another town that i don't like even though i promised i wouldn't destroy the uh, uh grand places like that again but instead i'm just going to be like pinpoint strike a person and turn them into salt immediately and in my mind i think to myself god wait a second hold on you could just point and turn people into pillars of salt but you went through all that trouble with the waterworks and the boats and the two people like a guy an old man had to build a giant boat we saw it in kentucky and, <laughs> and a, gather all project. of the two of the beasts or all of the animals together yeah, from all over like, the world it's like wait god hold on wait a second you could just turn people into salt that would have been way easier mm -hmm. <laughs> you could have washed it away with the water there's then so many things you could have done then you'd have a just so story about why the seas are all salty <laughs> <laughs> you would that's so good yeah. larry we should start a <laughs> we should start a religion. That's actually really good. Dang, yeah. that's so smart. Yeah. You could just basically be like, "Hey, why salt water salty?" Because this is the where all the bad people went. Yeah, people would understand Burned that ten thousand percent. Why can mm -hmm. atheists make better stories? Like two ten. Two, oh man, that's so good. Uh, yeah. oh, that's that's really good. That's really uh -huh. clever. Larry. Anyway, the main thing though is God loves theatrics. He loves partying. Uh, my takeaway is he always tends to take with the theatrics. He always tends to take the most complicated route to get to 
uh, a solution when there's always a much more optimal path to get there. Like almost every interaction that God has with people, every challenge he sets up, every trial he sets up could have just been, listen, just do this. But instead it's, okay, well, let me catch these uh, Egyptian slaves, have one of them be floated in the water through a river, and then I'm going to present myself to him with a burning bush, and then that person's going to go and do some magic tricks in front of the pharaoh, and then he's going to get a bunch of those people, and then they're going to walk up to an ocean, and I'm going to split the ocean, they're going to walk through it, and then I'm going to crash the ocean down on top of people. But first, I got to harden the heart of the pharaoh so he can make sure he chases after the people, even though he doesn't want to anymore. And I think we're okay. Oh, well, after that, they're going to have to keep traveling through the desert until they find a new power plant. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you can yeah, walk yeah. it in, what, a week? It's like, God, what was your goal? It's like, well, I just want to have a chosen people that live somewhere. It's like, you could have just picked them up and put them there, right? It's like, oh, <laughs> 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 that's pretty good. I like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but and the, I didn't one, even of, have one to... of the things with that story here is one of the big things is that slavery. He, he oh. told, no, he told Moses that he wouldn't live to see the promised land. Mm. So he had to march him around in the desert, you know, 40 years until he died before he'd actually let the people into the promised land. Right, right, right. So, right. I mean, that was for his great servant. Right. You know, that was his reward. Yeah. What a guy. It was, it was for the cost of theatrics. Like, even if you were to take the idea of Moses going up and getting the Ten Commandments, right? It's like, yeah, God, Moses is talking to God all the time, right? Like, they're praying and they're there, right? They're like, hey, God, I have a question. Sure, keep going left. Uh, God, uh, God, we need food. Okay, yeah, here's I'm gonna rain some food down. Manna. God, can you yeah. give me like ten instructions for what to do since you've been helping me out with all these really grand things like moving the ocean, splitting on command, and all that stuff? It's like, yeah, climb up to the top of this mountain for me. It's like, wait, can't you just tell me the rules? I got a pen and paper here. It's like, no, you yeah. gotta, you gotta come up with two yeah. giant rocks and make sure you come alone <laughs> so you don't have any witnesses. Yeah, yeah, come alone. You're like, God, are you sure about like how big are these rules? They're like, they're so long. There's such long rules. They're like the first rule is like don't have any gods before me. It's like I have some questions about that god, but like I feel I still feel like I could put that down on one line. It's like no, you got to drag these rocks up, boy. It's like okay, yeah. drags all the rocks up and like one by one he's chiseling them all in. It's like god, what's the next letter? It's like the T A and he's like god, what in the world? This is not how we normally do things. What's going on? I don't get it. And then he comes all the rocks down. He drags them back down. And people are like, you were gone for so long. We just decided to start worshiping this, like this, this awesome Golden cow cat. statue. This, and yeah. he's not telling us to own slaves. And he's not telling us how to live, like, uh, well, how to live and how, well, who to kill. He's just like a nice little representation of what we can do as a society as far as, as, far as like maintaining ourselves and demonstrating yeah. the fact that we can find supernatural beings on our own accord. Like we don't really need to listen to like other people. And we're, we're doing pretty good. Like we're all happy. We're having a party. It's like, unacceptable <laughs> mm -hmm. i'm so angry i'm going to destroy the rocks i carried down well, here it's like <clears> not only that but he he commanded half of them to kill the other half oh, I mean, no. at, yeah at that point you okay. know, it was like twenty thousand dead or something like that dang 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 and god's like that was pretty good that was pretty good yeah. anyway uh did you remember those rules like i wrote them down i can write them down and it's like no god you got to come back up here and write them down it's like the same rules yeah, you got to come up. And no, back down different again. rules. Different, different rules. rules. Different rules. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, there's three sets of Ten Commandments in the Bible, and, oh, and man. none of them match up exactly. Okay. You, you would think God would have ten rules, right? You know that He would repeat instead of giving them new ones. It would be so good if we just had them like printed in the sky in clouds, like once a week or something like that. That would be easier to believe too. There wouldn't be any atheists if you could do that. There wouldn't be any atheists. Or, just or use rainbows to spell them out. You know. Oh of yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Instead of having cool. stripes, just blank stripes, mm -hmm. just be like, here are the instructions that I want yeah. you to have, or like a quote to just be like, I love you. Be kind to other people. Don't be a yeah. jerk. You know. And it honest. would be entirely in his power if he was omnipotent to have. Uh, every person on earth have a book, you mm. know, the Bible in their own language that he constantly updated as he needed to, yeah. or as, as the understanding level of the person who's holding the book would accept it or, right. or understand it. No, nope, sure. that happens. We're looking mm. at ancient Greek and Hebrew mm. and that haven't it, changed in thousands of years. If there was, and I'm going to, I'm going to go back to your rainbow analogy. If there was a rainbow that instead of just being straight lines, because it's part of a visible spectrum, sure. mm -hmm. actually had in rainbow colors, the instructions for how to behave. And those scrolling like ticker tape on a newsfeed, just on every rainbow, it had the same set of instructions of like, this is mm -hmm. what you need to do to be alive. I'm not telling you to like worship me. I'm just saying like, these are the rules that I came up with and gave to Moses, like from a scientific point of view, like 
the there would be immediately two realms of science. There'd be two appreciated realms of science. The the natural things that we can test and whatever the hell heck that thing is, because we can't figure out how that thing's working. Is it technology that I'm we don't understand? Refracted it's light scroll words across the, <laughs> the sky. Yeah, 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 yeah. And until we figure that out, I don't think we'd be as much of an umbrage inhibiting scientific progress or or dictating how people should live their lives or anything like that if that yeah. thing was still existing every single time there was refracted light in the sky. Like, that would be the thing that make most people stop and be like, all right, maybe Christians have a point. Or maybe whoever's holy text that is, they have a point. Uh we will we will we will not tell them that we'll still like figure out evolution we'll still figure out all this stuff but like there'll still be so much more um what do you call it justification validation for belief in this particular god in the meanwhile and maybe that just helps make our lives less confusing with so many different competing narratives now we just know oh it's that god fantastic now we can be much more peaceful to each other maybe even use science to to help us all approach yeah. whatever that being's yeah. talking about you know did you did you see uh the day the world it stood still no i'm talking about the one that they did in the 50s i think or 60s it was black and white okay um the thing the whole the moral of that story was that uh they created an ai these aliens who came to earth that yeah look, they, they can look like anything but they came looking like us um, they created a master race of pro of uh, robots and gave them the power of life and death over humans turned out turned it over to them uh, with instructions to uh oh, oh, it said, destroy any aggressor in other words if they come across something where one person's obviously aggressing against the other one boom they're gone they're dead um that way peace did remain only on when all systems. the humans were dead? No, no. Uh, humans learned not to be aggressive, but um, especially, especially to each other. Wow. But I mean, why couldn't a God be like that? Oh. God looking down and he he's omniscient, omnipresent. You know, he's all over the place. He's theoretically all good. Sure. You know, if he he doesn't have to kill them, but I mean, he could he could warn them or um, it, delay it, them or punish yeah, them. You know, any aggressor be... that would, there you would have peace on right. earth. Right. It wouldn't even have to be like Bible verses. It could just be like, get vaccinated. You know, like it could be like any useful thing, yeah. right? There's like, buy an electric car, or like support hydrogen technology. <laughs> Nuclear was still a really good option, guys. I'm mm -hmm. just like, it is. If you ever, yeah. ever want to like feedback from a guy, just look at a rainbow and like read the ticker yeah. tape and everybody can be. Yeah, they're, they're working up a nuclear battery now. Have you heard about that? No. The Chinese that. are working up a. a have one in production right now and doesn't really put out right. quite as much voltage and amperage as a regular double a but they're working on it good. Little, little i mean the radiation is negligible you know for good. people good. outside of it yeah but it could you wouldn't have to replace it nice. period nice. because it wow. would last like a Forever? thousand years oh wow yeah. wow wow geez yeah. that's awesome yeah. i love that look it up um yeah that'd be cool so I, I know why i talk about rainbows is because i do feel like in the future capitalism will get to the point and technology will get to the point where we'll have rainbow ads like someone's going to figure out that science technology and be like you can put like, <laughs> letters and rainbows okay comcast is going to be like i have an idea and i'm willing to pay for it and the scientists are like fine if they're willing to fund the research we'll blow your advertisements we'll make fake rainbows and we'll put like your color ads on them. yeah uh, maybe satellites could do it with laser colored <sighs> lasers so much for technology it's okay yeah, yeah. all right Next one for me before we're done. How much time do we got? I think we got some time. All yeah, right. we got 15 minutes. Moral of this story is going to Joseph from the uh, Bible. Who's Joseph? Jesus' stepdad, the unsung hero of the New Testament. A lot of times we overlook the story of Jesus. I'm sorry, not the story of Joseph. Because Jesus is number one, his disciples are number one, uh, two, uh, and then maybe Mary is like a distant fourth or fifth in terms of like all the other characters that come up in the Bible, Lazarus, uh, uh, John the Baptist, uh, et cetera. Like what, what about Joseph? No one talks about Joseph except for the Mormons who have the book of Joseph, right? Um, but the idea is, and I want, is it the same Joseph or is it a completely different Joseph? Just, just as a heads up, Larry. The Mormon book of Joseph. Is that Jesus' stepdad, Joseph? Or I'm not familiar with it, character? but I would assume. No, no. The Mormon, I would think, would be a Joseph Smith book. Yeah, um, that's Joseph Smith. Um, he not... was the founder of Mormonism. So, Man, so they, even Joseph Smith 
picks up more credit than he is as a stepdad. But here's the thing: you have a if you look at like if you look at the culture even today of um, honor killings and and the women's rights for for people in that area, you have a story of a woman who is pregnant. Doesn't know who the dad is. Well, technically she does, but it's like a very hard thing to, to convince people of because when you tell them, hey, I have the yeah. son of God in here, it's like, who's he? Who are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Well, Wait a minute. A you're you're single and pregnant and God did it? Yeah, a little bit Oh, of that's a problem. You can't say yeah, that. A little, a little Get out of here. There. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not only skeptical, but that could be blasphemous. It could be, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, countercultural to the current well, society. I mean, uh, pregnant uh, before marriage was punishable by death, I believe, at the time. Just by default. It didn't matter even if it mm-hmm. was a human being that you can point to, mm-hmm. right? So like right. this is a lot. This is the pariah of pariahs, right? Because not only is she saying like I'm pregnant and uh, I'm I this solely to myself or whatever, because that that was the cultural view that's still wrong even to today. That's still used today. But the idea that like I'm a pariah and my baby was given to me by God, which is also a problem for like the current understanding of like how God interacts with people. So now you have Joseph who's like, you know what? You're talking a lot of, you're, I, I'm not saying I understand you, but I am willing to say that I'm willing to believe in you as a person and make sure that you're okay. And we're going to go to a place and we're going to make sure that you can give birth healthily or as well as I possibly can afford. And I'm going to stick with you and we're going to raise this kid together. Like if that is the story that you are presenting, Joseph, or Bible, that Joseph was not in fact the father, but was just some nice person that Mary knew. And they went out together and they they raised Jesus together. And Joseph the entire time was like, Jesus, let me show you how to be a carpenter. And Jesus is like, I know things. You don't have to tell me things. My God, my dad's God. He's better than you. It's like, who's putting food on your table, Jesus? Is it who? And who do you think's putting the food on your table? It's this. It's the hammers and the nails. We're going to learn how to do this together. It's like, ah, oh, I hate you. You're such a terrible dad. My dad is awesome. It's like, your dad's probably going to kill you one day. Like how I'm going to, if you don't pick up that hammer. It's like, Jesus is like, I hate this. I hate this job. No, there's no one. I feel like I was a fly on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's no one like, there's no accolades of how well joseph did to step up in a situation like that and i feel like my moral of the story is stepdads are cool and anyone who's willing to go through that much responsibility uptake has a lot of respect in my book more so than even jesus or god like i feel like the main takeaway hero for that whole new testament is just here's a nice guy doing a nice thing trying to do his best and and God, Jesus didn't make his life any easier. <laughs> God didn't make his life any easier, but he showed up for Mary. And I'm like, you know what? Good job. Good job, guy. You don't even know what happened to him at the end of the story. But like, I'm no. happy that he was he, he did what he had to do or yeah. what he, he, he kudos, wanted. Joseph. Kudos to Joseph. Yeah. Skip, and what incredible. gets me is that, you know, the Old Testament says that I, Jesus would be descended of some, you know, the the New Testament prophet or the uh, the savior would be descended from these line of, of people. Mm. And, and then when you get to the new Testament, they try to, they try to do his lineage. Yeah. And they, so that it will pass through Joseph, mm. but Joseph wasn't his father. Right. And there right. were actually because two different lineages Mary. in the book uh, that led to Joseph. They didn't agree. I mean, it's in the Bible, but they don't agree. Those two lineages. And neither one of them point to Jesus because he wasn't his father. Right, right, right. It's so messed up. Uh, uh, the other weird thing, though, is from a biochemistry point of view, that's where my PhD is in, right? Like, uh-huh. you need two sets of genes to make a person, right? And if God had a spare set of genes on hand, right, to to infuse with Mary's genes, then that has to give some that brings up a lot of questions in the back of my head maybe more more in the lines of these numbers but like you would have to have a phenotype you would have to have a racial disposition you would have to have potentially a, a health record like you don't just get genes <laughs> from somewhere sometimes you get genes that make you more prone to diabetes or mm-hmm. or far male or female too yeah or alopecia or male pattern mm-hmm. baldness there's like so many things that that <laughs> set of genes could be really useful for that God just has in his backlog. I'm like, God, God let me see your 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 karyotype. I want to <laughs> see your genes because you can put those on a table. You can put those on a, a Petri dish and we can examine them and like actually understand their sequence and figure out, okay, what did you look like? What did you, what's your problem? What's going on here? Mm-hmm. And now where's the God gene? The God gene. Yeah. The God mm-hmm. genes, if you will. But anyway, yeah. yeah, a lot of questions, a lot of morals that are overlooked. My main takeaways here are slingshots are better than swords uh god was the snake 
the guy loves to party does and and is so theatrical that he overlooks very simple solutions that he's already capable of doing stepdads are cool and if you were to take it all as as true the only conclusion that you come up with is god is just plum crazy that's my those are my morals <laughs> yeah, yeah and well if you look at the evidence like in today's world he's also uh sadistic yeah yeah but he's always been he's always been it's just yeah. it was a much more sadistic time back then and that's probably yeah. his pro that's why he appears so in the bible because he was a product of sadistic mm -hmm. people at the time right yeah. and yeah if if you were to take that even people were crazy back then and right. if they can still be now and but we know better now and so that's yeah. why no, so i i think that saying that god is just crazy um is a scapegoat and i mean is a, an excuse because okay. he does so much terrible stuff in the world mm. i mean there's good crazy there's bad crazy you know and, that's true and he seems to do so with a vengeance there are a lot and, of words that i want to use but we're on the radio and i can't use them so i'm trying to god is blank and yeah. you can fill in the gap there right yeah okay do you have any listener comments uh, uh for the past week I've not checked up on the show's comments. Well, while history. you check up, I'll uh, offer one that I got. Okay. Uh, I have a video out there that's um, about Pascal's wage, wager is invalid. It has 234,000 views now, but I keep getting, I mean, it becomes popular and then it goes away and then it becomes popular again. Uh, I've got one that says, my one of my arguments in Pascal's wager is that Every Christian sect thinks every other Christian sect is wrong. Sect is wrong, and a guy came back and says, "Well, most Christian sects agree that almost all other Christian sects are correct, but just incorrect in the particular observance of the sacraments, like the specifics of bap baptism." Well, my question is, yeah, but are they going to hell? <laughs> you know, uh, are they so wrong that they're going to hell? And if they're not going to hell, what difference does it make that uh, they believe it a little differently? And, you know, if if that's true, then does it matter if the major differences between the religions are true, like Catholics and, and uh, Protestants or Christians versus Muslims? Right. You know, I mean, they all worship the same God theoretically, but do they mm -hmm. do it the same? It's just... More questions than answers, I guess. A lot of questions and answers. <clears throat> Actually, feeds into some of the comments that I've been getting. Um, yeah. So let's see. Evangelical Carol 5336 uh, responded to our last show, which was on snowflakes. And how is it like you can look at a snowflake and be satisfied with the answer of God made it versus the explanation of knowing how snowflakes are made, which will actually give you some credence of figuring out, oh, wait a second, there's fake snow? It's like, yeah, because we, we know how to make snow. We know how to make mm -hmm. snowflakes. And once you know how it's once once you know people know how to make snowflakes, and you can then read about like how they're actually made, and realize that all these things that you think some guys designing are just an effect of how things crystallize, and it's a mm -hmm. natural process which we can duplicate to, exactly. Yeah. And it's just temperature and pressure and some little bits of particles in the air. You can look at snow that falls in your your window and be like, oh wait a second, that's the exact same ph phenomena that we're just manufacturing elsewhere and it doesn't need a god in order to make this uh -huh. and so evangelical carol said on the concept of that show there's a difference between an answer and an explanation Ooh, i am writing this one down smiley face on a heart uh on the same at show snowflakes Dada's trading room has sent a reply saying santa is a magical being he creates a temporary chimney whenever there isn't an appropriate one and God has no obligation. Let me read this again. God has no obligation to make sense to us. That's there's a good point. God doesn't have yeah. to make sense. <laughs> well, God doesn't make sense. It's just well, if you start believing things with no good explanation, where are you going to stop? That's my, yeah. my point. If you start um, believing in things that aren't obligated to make sense to you, then where's the line for you right. to to believe in? So, I mean, you're going to believe in Bigfoot and Sasquatch and yeah. pixies and and leprechauns. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that aren't obligated to make sense to me, but mm -hmm. doesn't mean I have to believe in them, right? right. Uh, this this name is confusing. Jaden Jordan Johnson <laughs> said, "Hi, love the show. Hi from the classic Tetris channel. Oh, and that was from the episode. Let's see, Growing Pains. And as you get older, you grow to new things. I guess we were talking about video games." Uh, on the show and um yeah that's cool thank you jordan 
Jesse Jaden Jordan Johnson version two. We appreciate the comments. Those are all our comments from last couple of weeks. If you feel like you need to add more to our comment history, we'll go over them on the show right here. Just feel free to leave them on either uh, Doubter Fives um, YouTube channel or my own channel. We'll go over them on the next week's show. Thank you so much. Yeah, and we're getting close to the end. Uh, do you uh, have any final words or mm, links, links you want to share? My moral of the story is. Uh, spring fever is a real thing and some of the best things that you can do is just reach out to good friends and have a good conversation even if it's an hour even if it's once a week you can still find good people to reach out to and have fun with find That's a right. yeah. or start when you one. get as old as when you get as old as i am you have a lot of old friends that you have lost contact with mm. reignite the contact i'm with our with their communications over the internet there's hardly any excuse not to do that nice so go for it cool and my own uh, website is digitalfreethought.com. Uh, you can, when you go there, click on the blog button for our radio show archives, uh, articles on uh, on atheism, and articles, I mean, songs on atheism. Um, you can also find our, this video as a podcast. Just search for Digi Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Uh, and if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Um, you can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. Um, remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next Wednesday night here on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM at 7 o'clock. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. And very good.